Our next speaker is John Pridmore, a former London mob enforcer who is now a Catholic speaker and author. John's talk on confession is sure to give you new insight into this incredible sacrament. We would like to thank the Paradisus Dei organization, which produces That Man Is You for tens of thousands of men weekly for letting us use this video from one of their meetings. Hello, maybe uh, you'll join me with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Blessed Mother, we ask you to help us to truly know the gift of mercy in our lives, that mercy which we cannot obtain from anywhere except your Son. Help us to know that your Son died for us and set us free by his death. Blessed Mother, take us by the hand, lead us through that crucifixion, to the resurrection that Jesus' death brought each one of us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All you holy angels and saints of heaven, pray for us. And I ask St. Therese of Lisieux, to bring down the fire of the Holy Spirit from heaven so that we might be set ablaze with that same Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll just uh, do a scripture reading from uh, Luke's Gospel. While he was still a long way off, his father was out searching for him. He saw his son, ran to him, clasped him in his arms and kissed him. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Kill the calf that we've been fattening, for we will celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, and he's alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Just outside Furless in Ireland in Tipperary, there's a farm with a difference because on this farm they breed expensive racehorses. One night when the owners were out, their young son of about 10 years old took a box of matches over to the barn because he was fascinated by fire. And in the corner of the barn, he built this little fire. Within a few moments, he watched in horror as the whole barn caught ablaze. And as he ran out, some of the racehorses were actually burnt to death. And he was so petrified of what his dad would do to him that even though it was dark and he was afraid, he wouldn't go back to the farmhouse. And he hid in some woods nearby. And he stayed there the entire night. In the morning when he woke up, quite delirious with the cold and hunger, he went back to the farmhouse. And as he knocked on the farmhouse door, he was shaking with fear of what his dad would do to him. His dad opened the door, grabbed him in his arms and began to kiss him. And he noticed that his dad was crying. Then his mum came running down the stairs, screaming with joy, hugging and kissing him. See, they both thought he had been burnt to death in the fire. They thought he was dead, but he was alive again. They thought he was lost, but he was found. They never mentioned what had happened to him. They were just so happy to have him back with them. I think in the same way, no matter what we do in life, no matter how many times we get it wrong, no matter how many times we fall down, God the Father just wants to embrace us. He just wants to hold us like the father embracing that prodigal son. And one of the most beautiful ways, I believe, that we can taste the gift of that embrace is through the sacrament of reconciliation. That's where we really come to know God's merciful love for us. In my own life, as some of you know, I hadn't been to confession for 27 years, and I think I'd broken every commandment there was. But at that confession... It was where I personally met Jesus and it completely changed my life. 
So why do we have to go to confession? Why can't I confess direct to God? Why do I need a priest? Well, Jesus says it to our first priest in John 20:20. 20, 20. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you've been to a priest ordination, but I've been to quite a few. And it really is tangible. They really do receive the Holy Spirit. And he says, any sins you forgive, in my name, those sins are forgiven. Any sins you forgive, in my name, those sins are forgiven. I really believe that when we go to confession, our sins are completely wiped away. None of them exist anymore. Someone said to me once that when we die, we don't watch a video of our entire life. I thought, my God, I don't watch a video of my entire life, especially with some of the things I've done. He said, but there's one thing that won't be on the video. Anything we brought to confession will be eradicated. And in its place will be a man dying on the cross, saying, forgive them, Father, they knew not what they did. Forgive them, Father, they knew not what they did. There was a Polish nun who said that Jesus was appearing to her. And her spiritual director, who was quite a learned priest, he said, well, if Jesus is appearing to you, ask him what the worst sins I've ever committed are. The next month when she came for confession, um, for spiritual direction, he said, what did Jesus say? She said, Jesus said, he's got no recollection of what your worst sins are because you confessed them. So they no longer exist. So he doesn't know what they were. That was the first saint that our late Holy Father Pope John Paul II beatified. Her name was Saint Fastina, the nun who brought us divine mercy. In other words, the church says that that is guaranteed. Anything we bring to the priest is eradicated from God's memory. Why do we have to be pacific? Why can't I just go to the priest and say, look, Father, I'm sorry for all my sins. Why do we have to be pacific about what we've done? Well, <clears throat> I live in Ireland now, and I've got a very good doctor. His name's Dr. Porrick. And whenever I go to him and I'm in pain, the first thing he says to me is, where's the pain? Well, I'm just in pain, doctor. Yeah, I know you're in pain, but where is it? See, he can't bring me that remedy. He can't bring me that healing until I tell him where it is. In the same way that if we don't tell the priest what we've done, Jesus, who wants to reach into that pain, reach into that wound and heal it, can't do it. Totally true story. When I was seven years old, I got a rosebush thorn embedded in my hat. And I was petrified of my mum getting a needle and start digging. You know, like mums do when you get a splinter. So I hid it from her for three days. I couldn't even sleep, it hurt so much. In one second, I think I was having a bath, and my mum saw this fawn in my hand. In one second, she removed it. I was seven years old, and I thought, what an idiot. Why didn't I just go up to her and say, Mum, it's hurting me. No more pain. But say I left it in there a year, or God forbid, 10 years or 20 years, or even 48 years. How much more pain would it have caused? If I had a little baby in front of us on this podium, and none of us knew the baby but the baby had a thorn in his foot. Out of our compassion, because the baby's crying, we come up and we remove the thorn from his foot. But say we love that baby more than we love their own life. Say we'd rather die in agony on a cross than have anything happen to that baby. How much more care would we take to remove the thorn from his foot? Well, when Jesus looks on us, the children, the many loves and adores. He knows every pain and every sin we've committed. And he sees those sins as thorns piercing our hearts, causing us pain. And he longs to remove them. But the only way he can remove them is when we give him permission. St. Mother Teresa's most favourite prayer, give God permission. And when we give him permission, he's not content with removing that form from our heart he's not content with taking away that sin he wants to fill us up with every grace and blessing 
when I walked away from that confession for the first time, I felt so free. I wanted to dance. I remember one of the biggest things I was afraid of is what the priest might think of me. And do you know what that priest was doing when I looked into his eyes? He was crying. He wasn't judging me. He was Jesus to me. And I've had the joy of working with many priests over the last 20 years. And one of the most humbling experiences of their priesthood is hearing people's confession. And the more honest we are, and the more complete we are, the more they're rejoicing in their hearts. So I really pray that we might have that courage to really give God permission to get rid of everything. Everything that troubles us, everything that worries us. What might the priest be thinking of us if we really have been a long time away? Well, one priest told me that when he had just been ordained, he had just been ordained a priest and he said his first mass. And a man walked up to him and said, Father, could I go to confession with you? This man hadn't been to confession for 50 years. He said, if I had died at that very moment after hearing that man's confession, it was worth becoming a priest. That's how much the priest was in awe of bringing that man God's forgiveness. So even if it's been many years, don't be afraid. You know, I think St. John Paul II said it so clearly, we should never be afraid. When I was thinking about going to confession and tasting God's mercy, there was all these thoughts that were bombarding me. But I felt Our Lady say, there is only one person who doesn't want you to make a good, honest confession. Listen to his lies or listen to my son's truth. And I thank God every day that I went to that confession. I thank God every day that I go to confession regularly now. Not because I'm holy, but because I'm a sinner. Do you know I go in a lot of prisons now to do talks? I like going into prison now because when I want to leave, they let me out. But there was a time they never used to let me out. But I've been in prisons all over the world, in Australia, New Zealand, the Cayman Islands, Hong Kong, China, all over Europe. The toughest prison I've ever been in in my life is a prison in the Bronx in New York. It's called Spofford. And it's for young men between the ages of 12 to 18 and most of these young men are in for long prison sentences it's all gang related well one of my friends he's actually my spiritual director now father bernard murphy he was asked to say mass in that prison and the mystery of charity sisters the mother Teresa sisters they help out in the prison so just before the mass one of the sisters comes over to my friend and says father bernard I think some of these boys might need confession. He said, these boys, these are tough kids. So he gets up and he says, look, if any of you want confession before mass, I'm available. None of them moved. So the little sister comes over to him and says, father, you need to encourage the boys. So he gets up and he says, look, if any of you are truly man enough to tell Jesus what you're sorry for, I'm over here and I'm waiting. This kid gets up, he's about 17, comes over and tells Father Bernard everything. Everything he's done to even be in there. And at the end of this confession, he won't even look at Father Bernard. Father Bernard said, look at me, but he won't look at him, he's looking at the floor. He said, look at me. And as he looked at him, he said, Jesus loves you. Immediately this boy started crying. Do you know, every single one of those boys went to confession on that day. And when Father Bernard told them I or I that Jesus loved them, every one of them wept. When I went to confession for that first time in my life, having committed practically every sin it was possible to commit, I cried for three days. I could not stop crying because God's mercy touched my heart so deeply. Do you know, when I was praying for this talk, I was reminded of some years ago, I went into a school, and in this school there was over a thousand young people, and I invited them to come to a mission that we was giving. 
One little boy, he was 12 years old. His name was Stuart. He had been in foster care since he was eight. He went back to be reconciled with his mum and her boyfriend put him in a coma for three weeks. He was already in trouble with the police and on drugs at 12 years old. And I had special permission from social services to allow him to come to this mission. And at the mission, he said to me, I want to say sorry to God. He wasn't even baptised. I said, go and tell the priest you're not a Catholic, but you want to say sorry to God. He came out and I could see there was a change in Stuart. And then we had a Eucharistic healing service where Jesus in the Eucharist comes to each person. When Jesus came to Stuart, I was nearly next to him and I could see he was about to cry. And so I put my arm out and he threw himself into my arms. And he was crying and crying. He kept on saying, I know that Jesus is real and I know he loves me. I know that Jesus is real and I know he loves me. Six months later, he was baptised a Catholic and I have the honour and privilege of being his godfather. Well, Stuart's now 22. And whenever I'm doing talks near where he lives... He comes in those schools and he shares his story. Not so long ago, I was doing a talk in um, Brighton, which is quite close to where he lives, and he came in and we spoke to 300 17, 18-year-olds. And, you know, when he got to the point where Jesus came to him, he immediately started crying in front of all these kids. Most of the kids were crying as well. And when we came out of the school... I said, are you okay? And he said, you know, I can never remember that moment where Jesus reached into my heart and touched my heart with his love without weeping. I really believe that through confession, Jesus wants to reach into every one of our hearts and he wants to transform them with his love. All we have to do is give him permission. And the more honest we are and the more open we are in confession, the more his mercy comes into every part of our lives. It's transforming. And we should begin a confession at least once every month. Do you know, I do a lot of parish missions now, and not so long ago I was doing a parish mission in Derry, in Northern Ireland, which is a tough place. A lot of people have had loved ones killed there through the Troubles. An 80-year-old man came up to me, and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Thank you. And he had tears rolling down his face. I said, it's my privilege. He said, no, no, you don't understand. He said, I've been going to Mass every Sunday since I was seven years old. But tonight I have personally met Jesus and he's transformed me with his love. I just went to confession for the first time in 48 years and I've met him. I don't believe it's possible for us to go to confession and be completely honest without meeting Jesus in a personal and transforming way. Every one of us needs his mercy. Every one of us needs his forgiveness. And when we taste that mercy and that forgiveness, it changes our lives. You know, I was doing a talk in this uh, drugs community not so long ago, and a lot of these guys in this community had taken drugs and really abuse their freedom you know what one guy he actually told me about his grandmother was so good to him and she was one of the few family members who wouldn't chuck him out and she looked after him and he repaid her by stealing five thousand pounds from her her whole life savings broke her heart and he asked me a question after my talk and he said how did you stop hating yourself I know you went to confession and you believed that Jesus had forgiven you, but how did you stop hating yourself? And I said, I don't think it was any coincidence that when Jesus was dying on that cross, he said, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. Because it was when I consecrated my heart to Mary that that's when I was able to stop hating myself for what I had done. That's when I stopped hating myself and started forgiving myself. Do you know, my, I wrote my first book 
and my mum wouldn't read the first half of the book where I was this terrible gangster. She didn't mind reading the second half where I'm doing all this good for God, but she refused to read the first half. One time I was coming back to England, because I live in Ireland now, and I'm speaking to my brother on the phone, and he said, by the way, when you see mum, she's read the first half of the book. I thought, my God. Anyhow, when I went in to see her, I said, what did you think, mum? Do you know, she burst into tears, and she said, I thought, my poor wounded little boy. I thought, my poor wounded little boy. She didn't see all the terrible choices I made, All she saw was her son who was hurting so much as to make those terrible choices. And I thought that's a slight reflection how Our Lady sees us. That's a slight reflection of how God sees us. Without judgment or condemnation, but with the eyes of mercy and understanding. I can't express to you how much my life is a grace now. Because I've truly been set free in God's mercy, to able to see myself as he sees me and to accept myself as he accepts me. I truly believe that comes through confession. And the more honest we are, the more it transforms us. I pray that every one of us who's watching this video makes the best confession we've ever made in our lives. And we ask Our Lady for that grace to really see ourselves as God sees us. Do you know, just lastly, I remember I'd been with God for over 20 years now. And about seven years ago, I realized I was addicted to gambling. And even though I didn't gamble every day, when I did gamble, I knew it took me away from God. So I got a priest friend to say this mass. And at the mass, I read out a petition. And I said, with your grace, Lord, I won't gamble anymore. And I put it on the altar. And you know, often I used to bring this to confession before this, and I used to confess gambling and knowing it was taking me away from God. And you know, it was a regular thing. Anyhow, after this Mass, for four years I didn't gamble. Every day I wanted to gamble, I just didn't gamble. About three years ago, I was doing some talks in Phoenix in Arizona, and uh, I got this little whisper in my head, why don't you go to Las Vegas? I wonder who that was from. Anyway, I went to Las Vegas because I was so full of pride, thinking I've overcome gambling. Within half a day, I'd done $100 on a roulette table. And I remember to justify my sin, I gave the croupier a miraculous medal. And he looked at me as I was completely crazy. And as I walked away, I knew I'd broken my promise to God. So I went into this church and there was a statue of Our Lady of Lords. And I took out my rosary and I said, I'm that prayer rosary in reparation to breaking my promise to your son. I felt her say, no, let me pray with you. And she took her hand and she placed it in the part of my heart where I don't want anyone to see me or anyone to know me. The real dark part of my heart where I don't want to even know myself sometimes. And she said, there's nothing in you I don't love. There's nothing in you I don't accept. And there's nothing in you I don't cherish. I cried and I cried and I cried. And you know, from that day to this, I've never had the desire to gamble. I pray that we open every part of our hearts to God and we're transformed by his love. Maybe um, some of the questions that you could share at the question time is what stops me from being honest in confession? And even in faith, if I believe Jesus has forgiven me, how do I forgive myself? And I really believe that Our Lady is a key to that second question. And let's remember as Catholics, we have the fullness of truth. We have the angels and the saints who are there to protect us and guide us. We have Our Lady who is there to lead us to her Son. So let us use those graces and maybe we can finish with a prayer. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your mercy. We thank you for your unconditional love for each one of us. We thank you for the gift of our Father in heaven who just wants to embrace us and hold us and reassure us. And we thank you for the gift of Mary who you gave to us at the foot of the cross so that we might bring 
that freedom and that grace that she brings to each one of us, to everyone we meet. So we ask you, Mary, to pray for us and intercede for us, that we might truly forgive ourselves and that we might make the best confession we've ever made. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.